everybody, welcome back to the channel. Let's see you again today. We're in the fish room, we've got some jobs to do. I've had a few comments recently about Mega Tank that it's a bit cloudy, it might need some more filtration, it might need some circulation. I think the problem is it's really the, the depth of the tank, the reflections that are in here, it's way worse on camera than it is in person. But I'll, I will concede it could use a little more clarity. So we're going to build a filter for this tank, um, a polishing filter. And see what we can achieve with that and the other tank where the tilapia is at the moment that is just a disaster zone any movement in there when he kicks things up he likes to redecorate it's just the cloudiest thing and the sponge filters are getting overwhelmed so we're going to put the fx2 to good use to see if we can clean up this tank and get it any better i actually have plans for the fx3 through. through this curtain is where i'm planning to extend the fish room so this area on the left here is, I'm just going to build that out, probably more of an office area, but my big discus tank, or my old discus tank, the one that broke, I'm going to repair that and get that in here and hopefully use the FX2 to filter that when that gets in there. So it's going to be a temporary use of the FX2 and it's really something that I'm using purely for its power. The FX2 is rated for much higher than this tank that we're going to be putting it on. So it should just be a case of using it as a one-off, using it to get the tank nice and clear. I won't be using it for biological filtration, I'll just be using it for its polishing capabilities, for the ability to turn water over many times in an hour. We've got the baskets here, um, the bottom one I will just leave the rings in there because I'm not going to hurt anything, but I'm mostly going to be filling the baskets with this polyester filter floss. Um, get as much as I can crammed into that and use the sponges that the FX2 comes with. And this should do a good job of polishing the water um, and it's just easy and cheap to swap it out. Here you can see there's the basket and basket technology. Here you can see all you need to do with the FX is just fill it up with water, put the lid back on and switch it on. There's none of this priming business. That's the One of the main features about this is the smart pump technology with auto prime. Um, I've got it here, it is very temporary setup, so I don't mind that it's just sitting there, but it's nice and compact and powerful, and that's doing the job that I wanted to do. I suppose I should be clear here and say the game's up. I actually recorded this video a very different way, but didn't turn my microphone on, or my microphone is now broken, so I'm having to do this narration style, so I hope it's not too distracting. So now we're on to the DIY filter. Uh, you may remember these buckets that I won at the local fish auction recently. I'm going to put them to good use. I'm going to make a shower type of filter, a backy shower filter. I'm going to drill a load of holes in the bottom of the bucket, stack them on top of each other, and use lots of the filter floss with this attachment to drain back into the tank in the bottom bucket. Uh, I've got a little pump like this, which is just one that I happen to have hanging around. So I'll pump the water back out of the tank into the top bucket, let them filter through. And it should do a really good job of cleaning the water. Um, it's something that I've used before. Um, in smaller tanks where I've used like a two litre bottle and run filter floss in that, this is just a bigger version. The floss that I'm actually using the filter for is actually this pillow. So the important thing to do is to get the cheapest additive free stuff. And this is just pure polyester and you can just pull it out and use it up, wad it up and it makes a great filter floss. The thinking behind the holes is it directs the water and makes it flow more evenly throughout rather than just finding the the easiest path and missing all the floss. So this spreads it across the floss and then we use this tank connector on the bottom bucket which obviously doesn't have the bottom drilled holes, just has the one hole there. That can return everything back into the tank. Um, it's a fairly cheap thing, you get b and I think it's about two quid, I just happen to have loads of them hanging around. So this is how the setup will look really. So the top bucket is where the water will come in. Just got a whole bunch of filter floss in there. Uh, that will drain through the holes into the second bucket. I've used these old broken tank dividers just as something to prop up the bucket so it doesn't compress all the filter floss too much. Gives it a chance to all run through and then it'll come through the bottom, through all the drilled holes into the bottom stage. And in this one, again, I've just chucked in some biological media because it ain't gonna hurt. Um, a little bit of extra biomedia isn't going to do anyone any damage. Then it'll come out this hose and return back to the tank. I'm going to prop the buckets up on this corner just because it gets a bit of support from both sides of the, both the front and the side. And I'm going to cut a little flap in the lid that I can also use as a feeding portal later because this is going to be a temporary filter. I'm not going to have this on here all the time. 
Um, so when I'm not using that, I can use it as a feeding portal. As you can see, Gordon's very interested in what I'm up to. So that's it, set up and ready. It's not the only filtration we've got on this tank. Obviously, under here it's hard to see, but there's a four foot sump in there crammed full of biological media. Um, so this will be a temporary setup, just a polishing device. Um, but yeah, I think that's all set up and ready to go. We've got the larger Oscar out. It's difficult to explain, but it just does, it doesn't look as cloudy as it does on camera in person. But as I said before, I can see it could be better. That's it running now. Um, I don't know what I expected. Yeah, water is flowing through it just as... I mean, there's not all that much to go wrong. The only kind of failure points would be if the hose was to slip off. I guess it could pump some water out. If the return wasn't to work properly or to leak, it might leak a little bit but yeah it seems to be working fine Um I think it'll take quite a while in comparison to the other one it'll take quite a while before we actually see any results probably but it's easy to maintain it's just a quick simple you can do this with any kind of bucket it can be a round bucket square bucket whatever Um it's a quick simple water polishing filter you could add more biological media and make it a proper filter and then there's the tilapia tank it's it's getting there um, quite a lot of flow. Um, I think that's a good thing when you've got a fish as large as this and a tank as small as that because at least it gives them something to swim against even if he can't stretch his legs properly. But if the flow gets too much I can turn this uh, return valve around. It's a double return so you can point it at the glass and then that reduces the flow a little bit. But for now this will do for him. Um, as always if you're interested in a big angry tilapia have a big tank or some robust tank mates. Let me know, you can have them for the price of one subscription. Yeah, it's a shame to let them go, but if I don't find a home for him soon, he won't be in this tank too long. I'll be taking him back to the fish shop and surrendering him back there, unfortunately. So this is the buckets after they've been running overnight, so let's say 12 hours. Um, not really much to see there and not really much of a difference, if any, but this is a good shot that shows the difference between what you see in the camera and what you see in real life. Those lines in the glass, they just don't exist in real life. This is a bit more representative, but it, it maybe has cleared up 5%, um, but we'll give it a week or so. The tilapia tank, however, overnight has gone crystal clear with the FX power, so I'll probably take this filter off and stick it on Mega Tank as well to speed up the process in that one too. Tilapia is still available for anyone that wants it, let me know. And we'll have a gratuitous feeding shot. There's Gordon eating his pellets. 1.8 goldfish per pellet. That still makes me laugh. <laughs> he gets these larger massivore delight, I think they're called, from Hikari. Whereas the other guys get a mix of my special pellet mix. But Gordon likes them too. This is kind of how they feed, they kind of dive bomb in and grab what they can and dive back out again. But I've never seen any aggression even at feeding time. Uh, Gordon's just basically like, oh, okay, you got that one. And they seem to get on okay. So that's a couple of jobs done in the fish room. Uh, there's always more to do, but I just wanted to show you a couple of different types of filters. Things you can knock up with things that are lying around in your fish room or your garage. And things that you can go and buy, the FX filter being a, a great, all the FX range, I'm, I'm really a big fan of them. But simpler stuff works just as well too. If you want to see how things pan out over time, make sure you click that subscribe button. You can join the channel or you can join me on a Friday night at 9pm UK time. Ask me any questions you want, like how to use a microphone. But until then, goodbye.